ladies and gentlemen, Mike Cronin. <laughs> Everybody, holy shit. <laughs> it's good to be here. My name is Mike. I've been trying to be healthier. I lost 70 pounds. <laughs> yeah, three years ago. <laughs> and I gained it all back. So. <laughs> Fuck me, you shouldn't have clapped. <laughs> that was so much weight, I learned stuff. Right? Like I learned, like I don't know if you guys know this. Do you know that you don't sweat all the time? <laughs> That's new information for me. I was cold last winter. That's it, that's the end of the story. It's just, it's never happened before. Do you know you can sleep all the way through the night without having to come up for air? It's true, you can sleep for eight solid hours. You don't have to wake up every three like, <laughs> ah, my left side's on fire you out of shape to sleep. This is bullshit. <laughs> it was tough for me, too, because I have no self-control. I don't. I only have enough self-control to say no to dessert once. That's where I max out. <laughs> and someone's like, you want some dessert? I'm like, no, thank you. Are you sure? Yeah, I just lied to you. <laughs> I'd love a lot. Can I get cake and ice cream and brownies? <laughs> and some coffee. I gotta get some room. <laughs> Make some room. Fuck. We'll fix that. Fix it. Fix it in post. <laughs> Chipotle is my biggest week this by far. I love it so much. Here's how much I love Chipotle. When that E. coli outbreak came out a couple years ago, my first thought, I swear to God, was, ugh, that sucks. I'm going to get E. coli. <laughs> it never occurred to me to just not go to Chipotle for a while. <laughs> I just left my house like, well, I'm going to take a couple weird shits. I'm going to throw up. Big whoop. <laughs> Trying to lose weight anyways, so. Shortcut. <laughs> I love traveling. I love like, experiencing local flavors wherever I go. I was in the Outer Banks, North Carolina. I thought I'd try some fresh seafood, so I got a fish sandwich from Dairy Queen. <laughs> Dairy Queen has a fish sandwich called Wild Caught Alaskan Cod. <laughs> you are out of your mind, Dairy Queen. <laughs> If you think that I think that you charter a boat to go catch fish. <laughs> Wild caught. What a crazy lie. Why would I even care? I'm buying a fish sandwich from an ice cream place. <laughs> I was only there for dinner that night because I got day drunk on the beach that day. And now I was night hungover. And I needed some grease in my body. So I didn't throw up in my sleep. <laughs> You can't throw up in your sleep. That's how you die in that embarrassing funeral for your family. <laughs> how did he die? Fucker didn't eat fast food. He was blackout drunk. Can you believe that? <laughs> Thought we raised him better. <laughs> so I'm there. I'm getting the combo. And they go, what do you want to drink with that? And I was like, I'll just have a water. And they go, you don't want ice cream? And I was like, I'll take a root beer float. <laughs> so the lady behind the counter, she starts pressing buttons. She looks confused. She calls her manager over, and he starts pressing buttons. And then they both look up at me and go, yeah, we don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dairy Queen can't figure out how to make a root beer float? <laughs> Let me walk you over to the freezer here. <laughs> you guys have bioengineered the cake ice cream hybrid. And whatever the mutant fuck a buster bar is. <laughs> can't figure this one out, huh? Well, I'm going to blow your minds. I'll take one large root beer, no ice, and a small ice cream in a cup. And then I just fucking Irish car bombed it in there. <laughs> and they crowned me the Dairy King. I love sweets, too. I was at a fancy cupcake place recently. I got a banana cream pie cupcake, and it was pretty good, but I don't know. I don't think there was real cum in it. <laughs> Everyone's just cutting corners these days. 
There's some filling in the middle, too. I took a bite. It was like, is that banana pudding? I almost threw up. <laughs> you know when you're expecting your favorite taste, and then you taste a different taste? You're like, oh. <laughs> Banana? Gross. <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys. I don't like that joke. I know. I think it's very vulgar. I think I'm better than it. But the company producing this special insisted I do it, so... <laughs> I'm wearing an earpiece, they just told me. They need a cleaner cut of it, so. Was that a fancy cupcake place one time? And I got a banana cream pie cupcake, and it was pretty good, but I don't know. I don't think there is real cum in it. Everyone's just cutting corners these days. There's a filling mill, too. I took a bite. It was like, is that banana pudding? I almost threw up. You know when you're expecting your favorite taste and then you taste a different taste? You're like, yeah. <laughs> Banana? Gross. <laughs> okay, I think that's good. We're good. <laughs> I had to drive 12 hours for a comedy show one time. The show is at 8 p.m. And I like to get there a little early. So here's what I did. I got up at 4 a.m. I got ready. I locked my keys in my car. <laughs> shit my pants. Called a locksmith. I ended up hitting the road at 8 a.m. for a 12-hour drive for an 8 p.m. show, which is how you have a panic attack in your car for half a day. <laughs> I got there two minutes before the show started. I had to get ready in the public restroom of the comedy club, and I've never looked more insane in my life. <laughs> Let me set the scene for you. There's a guy in the stall taking the nastiest coke shit I've ever smelled. <laughs> got the urinal with his dick out, no hands. He's just texting flying around like a fire hose down there. I'm at the sink, pretty sweaty, just brushing my teeth. It's brushing. Some guy walks in, he's like, Jesus, man, are you homeless? No, I'm actually who you paid to see tonight. So. I think we both fucked up on this one. I was doing a show at a bar one time and I had a hot set. I had a steamer, as we call it in the business. And I was hanging out after my tasty steam, and uh, all my friends told me how hot and steamy my set was, and their shirts were getting unwrinkled, and uh, I gotta be honest, that's not a real thing, I'm trying to start it, but oh, I had this succulent little steam at this bar, and all my friends told me I had a good set, so I had an inflated ego, I was feeling good about myself, looking at the bar, and a lady makes eye contact with me across the bar and starts walking around towards me, and in that moment in my head, I think, here we go, another fan. She's probably attracted to me too, so I let her down easy. She brought me right back down to earth immediately. She goes, excuse me, do you work here? I was like, oh. No, I don't. She goes, oh, okay. I just clogged the toilet in the women's room. <laughs> Do you know where I can find a plunger? I just told her I don't work there. <laughs> I mean, she took in that information, looked me up and down. I was like, well, he still could be a janitor at another bar. <laughs> or I look like a guy who takes so many shits at bars, I would just know where one would be. So I go, no, I'm sorry, I don't know where you can find a plunger. And she goes, do you think you just go in the men's room and check? I was like, what is going on right now? <laughs> I'm such a nice guy pushover, I don't even remember saying yes. <laughs> I don't, I just blacked out for like 15 seconds, came to in the men's room and out loud to nobody, I was like, oh, what the fuck am I doing in here? <laughs> I just ran some dishes, because I guess I work at that bar now. <laughs> do you understand what that lady did to me? I just had the steam of my dreams. <laughs> and this woman gaslit me into being a janitor. <laughs> I had a great 2020, and that's probably the shittiest sentence I've ever said out loud. <laughs> but it's true, I got engaged, and we have a baby now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, I finally got that cream pie. <laughs> Didn't eat that one. But, uh, yeah, I was nervous about being a dad, you know, because I have a dad. <laughs> My dad's a maniac. He knows nothing about technology. I was on the computer one time, and he walked in. He's like, hey, Mike, you ever hear about this thing called instant messaging? 
<laughs> it's like an email, but it's live, like a text. I'm like, yeah, Dad, I know what that is. Why are you crouching? He's like, your mother thinks I'm downstairs. And then he scurried away. And I forgot about it. A couple of days went by. I'm online. I get a message, and the message reads, Bone Snake 2, I sent you a message. Do you accept? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm all in for that. I click it and the message is, hey, it's your dad. <laughs> what? Bone snake too? <laughs> dad, that's the creepiest goddamn thing that I have ever heard. And is bone snake one already taken? Like, is grandpa bone snake one? <laughs> Do I gotta be bone snake three now? My dad has mood swings a lot. I think he's bipolar, but I gotta be honest, I'm not a doctor. My next best guess is menopause, so I don't know. <laughs> he just flips out and he will go back to happy in seconds. I was in their basement watching TV one time and he came down and he goes, looking good, buddy. I just gotta get some out of the storage room here. And as he walked in, he tripped over a box my mom put in his way. <laughs> Yeah, put in his way, that's what he said. I think she just set it down. So. But according to him, it was in his goddamn way. He lost his mind. He was screaming at the top of his lungs, just kicking and smashing boxes, just ruining our Christmas ornaments. So. And as he walks out of the storage room, he looks up the steps and goes, God damn it, Jackie, you fuck me again! <laughs> he slams the door, sees me, and he's like... Do you got any shows this week? I'm like, yeah, you psycho. What was that about? <laughs> okay, nothing, just normal stuff. Nope. No, it wasn't, Dad. <laughs> Going crazy over boxes in a basement isn't normal stuff. It's actually the plot to The Shining. <laughs> got so bad when I was young, we went to a family therapist about it because I guess we were the problem. I don't know why. <laughs> I'd be like if you had a flat tire and the guy's like, well, let me look at the whole car. It's probably one of the window's faults. <laughs> So we went, and this is what the guy told us to do. He said, whatever my dad would flip out like that, everyone else in the family should go in the other room and get these matching yellow hats. And we would put them on, not say anything, and just stare at my dad until he calmed down. <laughs> That's what a doctor told us to do. How crazy is that? Every time I think about that, I think it was just some Stanford prison level experiment. <laughs> the psychologist in his office one day thinking really hard, smoking a pipe, like, oh, what if I can get a guy to kill his whole family? <laughs> when I was 15, I went to a restaurant with my mom and they had a revolving door out front and I didn't have a lot of experience with those. So she went in first and I panicked and jumped in the same stall as her. And that's the worst decision I've ever made in my life. Because we were two big people, I just ended up dry humping my mom around a half circle. I knew I fucked up right away. Because the second I got in, she was like, Bleh. Oh, God damn it, Michael! I was like, you think I planned this? This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. The walls are made out of glass, too, so the whole restaurant saw us do this. <laughs> like, check out Oedipus and Revolving Door over there. <laughs> we were wedged in there so tight that we popped out of the other side and then just had to have the most uncomfortable dinner of all time. It's like, well, I guess we're not making eye contact for five years. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. If that wasn't my mom, that would have been one of the best dates I've ever been on. <laughs> We fooled around a little bit, and then she bought me dinner? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and she drove? <laughs> I'm gonna get fucked up. <laughs> my oldest brother is a college football coach, and I was at one of his games with my parents. And so thousands of people are exiting around us, and my mom is standing right next to me, and she goes, oh yeah, I forgot.
After about five minutes of that, I was like, hey, mom, what's, uh, what the fuck are you doing? What is that? She goes, oh, I have a Fitbit. I'm in a steps competition with your brother, and I'm not going to lose my son. All right, mom, well, you're going to lose a son if you keep doing that. Because I'm not going to stand next to you while you swing your arms. Like you're a Nazi trap in an Indiana Jones movie, Mom. I've been doing that joke all across the country. So many people have told me that they've caught their moms doing the exact same thing. My friend was out with all of her sisters. They couldn't find their mom for 10 minutes. They're so worried. They're about to call the police. And they found her behind a bush, and she was just... And I want to know what happened to our moms. Because they raised us to know right from wrong. And the second they got these Fitbits, they're just filthy cheaters all of a sudden. <laughs> and you have a Fitbit, don't you? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I have a tip for you. I shouldn't even help you, but I'll give you this one tip. It's just on one wrist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't have to do this. Just this. That's all I got to do. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> also, see this motion we're doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why you can't beat your sons. How uh, can you beat us when we're beating ourselves? You can't. I heard her call my brother one time. She's like, how'd you get 8 million steps today? That's crazy. <laughs> Do you guys remember the first time you ever realized that your parents were stupid? <laughs> I'm not talking about as a teenager, like, you're dumb, dad, you don't know anything. That's not what I mean. I mean, when you're having a real conversation with one of them, they say something to you and you're like... <laughs> Oh, you might actually be one of the dumbest people I've ever met in my life. I had that moment with my mom. She's teaching me how to drive, and she's pointing out all the buttons in the car, and she points to the button that circulates air throughout the car so it'll heat up or cool down faster. And what she says to me is, now see this button right here, Mike? Never press that. Because what that does is that pumps air from the engine into the car. My mom thought that car manufacturers put a button inside every single car that kills you <laughs> and everybody in the world but Jackie Cronin just fucking rolled the dice. <laughs> My brother's dumb too. He is in high school, he used to buy me alcohol on the condition that I first had to shave his back and we don't talk anymore. It's disgusting. I'd use Nair for a while. Yeah. If you don't know, Nair is a chemical that burns the hair off your body. And it smells like a chemical that burns the hair off your body. And it ruins your relationship with your brother. I've been making fun of him now for 20 years for having this disgusting husky-like back. You know, it's so thick it has an inner coat and an outer coat. Keeps his back dry in the pool. It's gross. <laughs> but I just turned 35. I'm starting to get a hairy back, and I don't know what to do because I'm the youngest. So I've just been hanging out at gas stations by high schools. Just... <laughs> hey, who wants some booze, huh? <laughs> well, grab a shick. Meet me in the bathroom. <laughs> it's a joke. I don't really do that. I just don't shave my back. I'm a gentleman, so I keep my shirt on at all times until I'm having sex, and I don't have the type of sex where she is going to see my back. So, you might have to do some math in your head on that one. Uh, she's never behind me during sex. So, I was right here in front where I can keep an eye on her. Uh, we used to have a computer room at my parents' house, which is a ridiculous thing to say in 2022. Try explaining the concept of a computer room to a 20-year-old. It's not going to go well. I did. I was talking to my buddy, and he's like, what? 
just move the computer. <laughs> Every room's a computer room, stupid. It's like, no, man, it was a desktop. It was hooked up to a modem. He's like, what are you, a fucking hacker? Why would you need? <laughs> Our computer room was right at the top of the steps. It was right next to my parents' room, and it was where we all masturbated. It's where we all... <laughs> I assume that's right, Dad. <laughs> I wasn't like waiting in line or filling out a schedule. It was just <laughs> where the internet was. Here's the problem with the computer room. You can't shut the door to it. Because if a computer is the only thing in the room, why would you ever need privacy? Because your pants are off. That's why. You can't shut the door. That's too obvious. If you shut the door, you might as well just hang a neon sign outside that just says tugging it. It's got a tugboat captain on it just pulling a whistle. Thirty more seconds? God damn it. Okay. <laughs> so what I would do is I'd leave the door open and I would listen for the stairs to creak so it was time to put away. And I think my parents caught on because they started to walk upstairs as slow and as loud as they possibly could. <laughs> we had an L-shaped staircase. They'd be at the bottom like... All right, here we go. These bad knees. Uh, oh, hey, dog. Halfway up the steps. What are you doing? I'm going to step over you, walk by the computer room, and I hope I don't see something that ruins my relationship with one of my sons for a while. Whoa, give me three steps. Give me three steps, mister. Three steps towards the top. Oh, hey, Mike. We didn't even know you were here. <laughs> it's actually a good piece of advice. If you have teenagers at home, you should be as loud as you can all the time because they're masturbating all the time. They're pretty glad you're here right now. I think that messed me up permanently, though, because now I'm very quiet during sex because that's how I jerked off for so long. I'm very self-conscious of it. I hate it. One time I got drunk enough to build up the courage of dirty talk for the first time. So I was just quiet like always and out of nowhere. I was just like... <laughs> hey, like that! And she was like, what? <laughs> Nothing. Sorry. Shouldn't have shouted at you. Let's go back to being weirdly fucking quiet. Sorry about that. I started to dirty talk more after that, but I was new at it at first. I had hesitation in my voice. That's not sexy. No one wants to hear, yeah, you like this dick? You like that dick? You like it in your vagina? Is vagina okay? I don't know, a lot of women are weird with a certain word. I just don't know which one's yours yet. I know I can't say moist. I found that out the other day. I love my fiance. She's the best. I knew she was the one from the beginning. The first test was just introducing her to my family. So I brought her as my date to a wedding. I was nervous that she wouldn't live up to her expectations. And then we got there and I was like, oh, wait, my family is crazy and they don't have any. So <laughs> this is going to be great. My grandpa, I hadn't seen him in a while. And his wife died a couple months before the wedding. And the first thing he says to me is, oh, Mike, you should have been at the funeral. It was hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. He's like, yeah, everyone was busting jokes. <laughs> it was a really good time. He had the most fun I've ever seen him have all weekend. He was dancing, laughing, smiling. It was the point where my fiance was like, I think he may have killed your grandma. <laughs> I asked him at one point, I was like, how did she die again? And he's like, natural causes. <laughs> so we had this going away brunch after the wedding, and um, I'm saying my goodbyes to everyone. She's in the car already. I'm about to walk out the door, and my grandpa yells across my entire family. He goes, by the way, Mike, you got a nice piece of tail there. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you just say? He's like, your girl, she's a nice piece of tail. He's like, yeah, I know, I heard you. I was hoping you would change it the second time. <laughs> piece of tail, that's so gross, isn't it? I would never publicly treat someone with such disrespect he loved back like that. You know, I'd never be like, oh, Grandpa, I'm so sorry you uh, lost your slam piece recently. <laughs> Hope you find a new cum dumpster to drop those loads in. 
Well, I gotta hit the road. I'll see you later, Bone Snake One. <laughs> my fiance met my mom at that wedding. My mom, she's such a ball buster. She says, I didn't have a girlfriend until I was 24 years old, so she started introducing me to her friends as, this is my son Michael, I'm pretty sure he's gay, but I still love him. <laughs> when she met her, she goes, it's nice, you make my son happy, you seem like a great person. Also, thought he was gay for a while. <laughs> and my fiance goes, oh, that's funny, he's not. He's really not. <laughs> I was surprised, because you meet him, and he's so sweet, and then you get him in the bedroom, and he is a freak. And my mom's like, that's enough, I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> When she first told me that, I was so stunned. I was like, why would you say that to my mom? But that was the perfect thing to say, right? Because my mom was just being a dick. She's just like, <laughs> my son's gay. <laughs> and my fiance is like, oh no, he fucks. <laughs> he gets me all creamed up. <laughs> yeah. Now my mom's got that bounce around her head for the rest of her life. <laughs> but take that, Jackie. Also, I guess I realized from that story, I guess I have sex like I'm trying to prove to my mom I'm not gay. <laughs> kind of a bummer. I'm a bath guy. That might surprise some of you. Like, can you fit in a tub? Just barely, but I love it. No, <laughs> snuggled up. It's great. I know it's not the manliest thing to admit, but you know what? Cowboys took baths. They're the manliest men that ever lived. Yeah, I watch Westworld. <laughs> Do they take them with bubbles in the book like I do? Probably not. But how else can I enjoy my white wine? I don't know. Didn't light all these candles for nothing. I do know it's not the best way to clean yourself because you put the three grossest parts of your body in the water first. You got that nice clean tub of water and you step in with your stinky feet, dirty butt, frothy genitals, and then you're just sitting in a broth of your own filth at that point. I used to jerk off in the tub back at junior high, which I don't recommend. No, it's too loud. All that water moving around. My dad would come knocking on the door like, what's going on in there, buddy? I'm like, oh, rough seas, dad. Got about five inch swells. It's pretty choppy in here. I was living in Chicago before the pandemic and I was riding the train one time and I saw a guy across from me. I think he was homeless because he had a bunch of homeless symptoms. Oh, he had a dirty face, he had some stink lines coming off him. <laughs> and he was surrounded by a moat of grocery bags. And at one point he pulled out a jar of soup. Didn't know soup came in jars. <laughs> Pops the top, starts chugging that, and then chases that with a jar of sunflower kernels. Like he was making his own Panera summer squash bisque in his mouth. <laughs> I'm watching this guy for like five minutes, hardcore judging him, like this guy's a psycho and it's awesome. And what I didn't realize is that the entire time I was watching him, both my hands were in my lap. And one of my hands had found a hole in the taint of my jeans right down here. And unbeknownst to my brain, I was just absentmindedly just playing with it, just moving it around, sticking my finger in and out of it. So I'm sitting here going, this guy's nuts. Meanwhile, there's somebody over here going, this guy is fingering his jeans right now. <laughs> Anytime you ride public transit, you're just ranking who's the craziest. I got second that day. <laughs> Probably first, actually. Because I was like, Bear, I'm crazy. And I'm like, yeah, you're crazy. And I'm loving it. <laughs> I thought Chicago, you know, I liked it there. It was just getting a little unsafe. So I thought I'd move somewhere safer. So I moved in with my fiance into the ghetto of Detroit, and <laughs> between us, we have two dogs and three cats in a studio apartment, which is like starting a zoo in a closet. It fucking sucks. <laughs> and it was the ghetto. Was, everything was broke. They didn't fix anything. We didn't have a bathroom door for the first three months we lived there. And then they finally put one in, and it was bigger than the door frame, so you couldn't close it all the way. And I don't know if you know this about your pets, but every time you take a shit, all of them are like, I wonder what that guy's up to. <laughs> and there was no way to stop them. So every time it was just a parade of all five animals coming in. <laughs> I got a dog licking this thigh, a cat climbing up this one. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I love my animals, I do. I love every single one of them. But if I had to rank them from the ones I love the most, to the ones I love the least, cats are bottom three, for sure. 
And I love my cats, don't get me wrong, but you put up with so much bullshit as a cat owner that you never would as a dog owner. <laughs> Let me tell you about the best cat we have. She's 18 years old. She was raised by chain-smoking lesbians. <laughs> and I say that because this is her meow. She goes, Mah. <laughs> Mah. She Sounds like one of Marge Simpson's sisters. <laughs> We've had her for 12 years. She still has cigarette breath somehow. Also, almost every night she wakes us up because she's licking a box. <laughs> Lesbians. But two more things. <laughs> if her food bowl is empty for more than two minutes, she will walk up to you, act cute, and then bite the fuck out of you. And about once a month, she crawls into my closet and pukes on my clothes. <laughs> and that's the best cat we have. My dogs would never get away with the shit my cats get away with. If one of my dogs bit my baby or my fiance, we're like, we gotta get rid of that thing now. If one of my cats bites my baby or my fiance, I'm like, well, you were in the bathroom and that's Patsy's room and you know that. <laughs> my son uh, was born in May. His name is Rory, which is Celtic for the Red King, which I thought was the most badass way you could say, godless ginger. <laughs> That birth was life-changing. I mean, I know it's even cliche to say at this point, but like, I was just so in awe of my fiance. She did the most amazing job. Any guy in here who thinks he's tougher than his wife who's had kids, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> it was like three or four times I was like, I would have killed myself by then. This is, <laughs> this is pretty impressive. Yeah, she was in there for 27 and a half hours of labor. Yeah, by the end, I called it. I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, cut that fucking thing out of her. I'm tired. <laughs> There's a lot of embarrassing stuff that can happen during pregnancy. Like a lot of women poop themselves, and I'm not even gonna say whether she did or didn't do that, all right? It's our relationship, it's built on love and trust, and I would never dishonor that. But hypothetically, <laughs> if that would have happened, I would have been surprised that it's a nurse's job to grab a wet nap and just palm it like a dog walker. <laughs> and then to throw that into the big open trash can that was right next to me. <laughs> and according to a medical journal I read about this, I almost threw up. <laughs> we didn't know his name was gonna be Rory until after he was born. And it's my fault, too, because early on in the pregnancy, she gave me her list of top five boy names, and I made fun of her so much that I don't think we're going to get married anymore. <laughs> but in my defense, two of her top five boy names were Otis and Cecil. <laughs> what? Otis and Cecil? Are we having a baby or a grandpa? Otis and Cecil learned baby names. They're not. That's the name of a gold prospector? <laughs> and a slave owner, I think. We're not doing it. <laughs> what are your girl names? Agnes and Ethel? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> She's like, what do you want to do? Name after your dad? I was like, Bone Snake? I don't know. <laughs> it's a family lineage, I guess. <laughs> I think it's really sweet that a guy would name his son after his dad, right? That's very nice. But I bet it's also very satisfying to yell at and control someone with your dad's name. That's got to feel great, doesn't it? Kids acting up, you're like, no, come on, Kevin Cronin. Get in the car, you little asshole. <laughs> no, we're not getting ice cream because you cheated on mom, you piece of shit. Now get in there. <laughs> Buckle up your sister, Ethel. <laughs> I love being a dad. I love my new life. I was bad at being single. I was. The last girl I dated before my fiance, she liked rough sex a lot. Like real rough sex. She liked rough sex to the point that now that we're broken up, if I see her walking down the street with a new guy and she looks really happy, I'd think, I don't like the way that guy treats women. <laughs> All that choking and slapping, that guy's a real piece of shit. You guys know me by now. I'm a sweet boy. Can't be doing all that rough stuff in the old bedroom. She loved it. She's like, I want you to slap me and choke me. I was like, why? What'd you do? <laughs> hey, you know what? We don't hit in this house, young lady. Now, if you did something wrong, I'll fuck you and take your phone away for an hour, but that's it. I was bad at it at first. Thank God. 
That's not something I want to be naturally gifted at, is abusing a woman. But I got better at it because I cared about her. I have to become a character in the bedroom. I have to become a guy who's having sex and also angry at the same time, which is a person who's never existed in the history of the world. No guy's ever been angry during sex, like, oh, let's just get this over with, huh? I gotta get back in that lawn. So I'd be this character, but I, I'm nice, I'm appreciative, and that stuff, that's not a word, <laughs> appreciative. <laughs> so that stuff would sleep, seep through in my angry guy voice. She'd come in the bedroom and like, oh yeah, you're just gonna come in here? Start taking your clothes off? Show me that body? It's really sexy? <laughs> and then we're gonna start going at it and be on top of you and be dripping sweat down onto you. And you're not even gonna say anything because you don't want me to be self-conscious? <laughs> Oh, I can't even fucking believe you right now. <laughs> you stupid slut. Come here, I'll choke you. <laughs> I'll smack you around. So I'm good at it now, but... My longest relationship before my fiance, I dated a girl for six and a half years, and it would have never worked out. She had one of these high-paying jobs. She made way more money than me. She's a teacher. <laughs> She did. She made like twice as much money as I do, so <laughs> follow your dreams. I'm not a guy who's emasculated by that. She was just bad at trying to relate to my level of brokenness. You know, she's like, oh, I'm so broke this week. I was like, oh, why? She's like, well, I bought an eight-day all-expenses paid vacation to Mexico. And I was like, oh, I know how you feel. I got to go to a coin star later so I can pay my phone bill before they turn it off. <laughs> We're in the same boat. <laughs> Until you go in that boat without me. That'd be fun. <laughs> Looks like I just booked an eight-day vacation to watch your dog, huh? <laughs> that was a long-term, long-distance relationship. And guys, if you're in here, if you're in a long-term, long-distance relationship, here's what I think you should do. You should walk over the nearest body of water and cut your dick off and throw it in. Because <laughs> it's a better use of your time. At least it'll be wet. That was our problem. We weren't having a lot of sex, and I'd go to visit her, and she's like, I feel like you only come here to have sex with me. And I was like, no, I come here to see you and spend time with you, but it is also the only time we physically can have sex, unless you have some sort of magic teleporting glory hole I don't know about, <laughs> where I can just stick my dick in my furnace in Chicago and just pop up in your bed. <laughs> That's how horny it was by the end. Somebody could have suggested that, and I would have just done it without even thinking about it. <laughs> right here in this big machine full of fire? Yeah, I'll throw it in. Ah, son of a bitch! Burned it off. <laughs> By the way, I think it's complete bullshit that guys have the balls to complain about women being slightly irritable when they're on their periods. When if you don't have a guy, have sex with a guy, for a, thank you, one person, that was very sweet. <laughs> it's such bullshit. When if you don't have sex with a guy for over a month in a row, he becomes the most rage-filled hate monster. <laughs> That's ever walked this earth. That's what I think was going on with my dad growing up. He was just walking around our house like, motherfucker, I can't... Fuck your mother. <laughs> I saw him call a mop a crack whore one time. <laughs> Do you understand how mad you have to be at everything? To be using a mop and it's not going well, and you're like, this thing's a damn crack whore! Slam it down. <laughs> heard him yell in the bucket, why won't you fuck me? I'm like, hey, dad, relax. <laughs> that started having me, too. I'd get so mad. I'd pick a stupid fight over the stupidest shit I didn't even care about. You know, ladies, my body is full of hormones. You wouldn't understand. But <laughs> my girlfriend at the time would be sweet to me all day. I'd walk in the kitchen all angry for no reason. Like, hey, how come I never get to season the salmon? <laughs> She's like, what? What is wrong with you? It's like, you're right, I'm sorry. I'm going to go in the bathroom and be a better person. So. <laughs> and it's not her job to have sex with me. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you have sex with me on a regular basis, it makes me a better partner, and I can't help it. But also, the more you have sex with me, the better I am. So, <laughs> huh? That's good. Like once a month, I'll rub your back when you have a bad day, cook dinner for you. Once a week, I will clean your floors with a goddamn toothbrush. <laughs> if you have sex with me every day, I will quit my dreams and kill all my friends. <laughs> In a heartbeat. I don't mind being pussy whipped, I don't. I just need that active ingredient. 
Towards the end, we got uh, really drunk one night. We hadn't had sex in six months. And we got drunk. We were fooling around. It was about to happen. And out of nowhere, she goes, hey, how come you never tried to put it in my butt before? (laughs) Well, I'm a Christian, for one. (laughs) Also, we don't have regular sex, so why would I think this was on the table? (laughs) I'd have to be a psychopath. and be like, hey, I know you don't like to give blowjobs or have sex. Is it because I'm not trying to cram things where you poop? Is that why? <laughs> but like I said, we were drunk, so we gave it the old college try. No. Didn't work out. <laughs> I had too much whiskey that night. So I was having a performance issue. <laughs> and Philly, I don't know if you guys are familiar with how the human asshole works. but <laughs> It's not a place you can just casually put a limp penis. So. <laughs> It's not a coffee table. (laughs) Or your frat brother's passed out face. It's not. It's a one-way street. I'm going the wrong way on a flat tire. This isn't happening. (laughs) You know what? I never thought I would be in that situation. I didn't think it would ever happen again. So in that moment, I thought, I'm going to do this if it takes me next two damn hours. And it did, and it didn't. It didn't. (laughs) I felt so bad for it. It was just impossible. It was never going to happen. It was like trying to pick a lock with a real thick worm. (laughs) Real thick. (laughs) Like a snake, but short. Not that short, like average. But thick. I gotta go. Bye, bye, bye. I gotta go. Mm-hmm.